NASA's ongoing search for life-sustaining planets faces daunting odds. It's like looking for a firefly right next to a searchlight. But now a planet 500 light years from Earth offers new hope. With all of the planets that we have found so far, this one is the most intriguing. The world known as 186F bears an astonishing resemblance to our own. What's the best other world that might house intelligent beings? Probably Kepler 186F. The half-billion-dollar Kepler telescope is four years into its mission to find potential life-sustaining planets. Analyzing data from the distant Cygnus starfield, the Kepler team spots what appears to be a very promising planet. We have this new batch of data down from the spacecraft. We're all analyzing the data, and Tom Barclay runs around to everybody's offices and says, have you seen this planet? And it's the one, it's the one we've been looking for. It's an Earth-sized thing in the habitable zone of its star. And everybody was extremely excited. The new planet is almost the same size as Earth. It's also the right distance from its star in what scientists call the Goldilocks zone. We call it the Goldilocks zone because it's not too hot and it's not too cold. It's just right for liquid water to be on the surface. For planetary scientist Sarah Seeger, finding Kepler 186F is a dream come true. Kepler 186F was the first example of a planet that's about Earth's size that's in its star's habitable zone. And so it was a cause for celebration. But for all the similarities between Kepler 186 and Earth, there is one crucial difference. Kepler 186 is more like an Earth cousin, but it's orbiting a very different star from the Sun. The star that Kepler 186 is orbiting is an M dwarf, uh, so it's only about half the size of the Sun. It's smaller, it's redder, it's cooler. The readings give rise to speculation among scientists that the planet could have an Earth-like atmosphere and raises the question of what life on this strange world might be like. The light from the star is quite red, so the oceans will look quite orange. The vegetation might do very well on Kepler 186F because there's so much more light in the infrared. A world with orange seas and strange yellow vegetation could even offer a viable environment for more complex life forms. I would love to imagine that Kepler 186F has a dense atmosphere that actually is equivalent to the density of water. And you can imagine creatures that can move easily between water and air, just like we have amphibians. The planet's combination of location and composition make it our best hope for discovering other sentient life forms in the universe. What's the best other world that we found that might house intelligent beings? Beings as clever as we are, more so. Uh, probably Kepler 186F is that, simply because it's the closest analog we found to Earth. Kepler 186F is likely older than our star and our Earth and our civilization, which means they could be more advanced than us if they're there. But if there is intelligent life on Kepler 186F, we may have to wait a long time for a close encounter. Kepler 186F is 500 light years away, which is pretty close by galactic standards, but pretty far away by our current technology. For space scientists, this new Earth offers a promising destination for when humankind eventually departs for the stars. Many of us share the dream that someday our descendants will find a way to travel to planets orbiting other stars, and they're gonna need the closest planets possible. Coming up, a secret NASA Cold War project uncovers something disturbing. This could potentially change the course of the Cold War. This could be the beginning of the end. In the dark days of the Cold War, a NASA satellite detects a frightening signal in Earth's atmosphere. This was almost certainly a nuclear explosion. This could potentially change the course of the Cold War. Could it be a preemptive strike?
Throughout the Cold War, NASA scientists and engineers manned the front lines. While the space race makes headlines for more than a decade, the agency also plays a secret role aiding the U.S. military. In August 1963, leaders of the world superpowers come together to sign one of the most important agreements in history. After the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, both sides realized that they had almost gone too far and things had almost gotten out of control. Kennedy and Khrushchev realized that we need to have a partial test ban treaty. Both sign it, but neither trust each other. The treaty bans all nuclear test explosions above ground. Despite all of these treaties, neither side really knew what the other one was up to. And both of them were deeply suspicious and fearful. Three, two, one. NASA assists with the launch of a series of spy satellites, Vela 1 through 12, to ensure no one breaks the pact. These advanced Vela satellites are loaded with high-tech equipment, X-ray, gamma, neutron detectors, but they also have bang meters, which are utilized to detect the intense light flashes that come from a atomic explosion. 16 years after the first launch, the Vela satellites are nearing the end of their useful lives. But technicians at Patrick Air Force Base, Florida, still keep an eye on their readings. And when they look at Vela 6911, what they see is truly disturbing. Is a double flash signature. The double flash is the hallmark of a nuclear detonation. Most people think of a nuclear weapon as something that just explodes. It actually explodes twice. And that was the unique signature that was caught by the satellite. To the technicians in Florida, the flashes look like a rogue nuclear explosion. But the location, somewhere over the ocean between Africa and Antarctica, makes no sense. There weren't supposed to be any nuclear detonations in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There's many locations that would be obvious potentially for a nuclear detonation, but between Africa and Antarctic, not where we expect it. The detection of the suspected nuclear explosion creates panic at the White House. Has someone breached the nuclear testing ban? The obvious immediate suspect would be the Soviet Union, but that made no sense. They had no reason to be testing nuclear weapons in the middle of the ocean. 